Hi guys, welcome back to Roomorg TV. I am Roomorg Executive Editor Andrea Subasati. And if you've been thinking about subscribing to Roomorg Magazine, and I know you have, now is the perfect time to do it, and I'll tell you why. We are having a special giveaway for new subscribers where you could be entered to win a 1,000-piece puzzle of Count Dracula's castle. This is a puzzle illustrated by Holly Carden. It is beautiful, it is collectible, and it could be yours with a subscription, which you were thinking of getting anyway. I'm going to link our shop in the description below. Please enjoy this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Rumorg TV, and we'll catch you next time. Welcome to Rumorg TV's Terror Tarot. My name is Laura Hawkstead, and I'm an intern here at Rumorg Magazine, and also a tarot card reader. And on our show, we like to look at the use of tarot cards in horror films. And today we're going to be looking at the 1972 horror film Necromancy. <laughs> Necromancy was released in 1972 and stars Orson Welles and Pamela Franklin. The film was also reworked and re-released in the 80s, in which they changed the ending and also added other scenes to it and renamed it The Witching. So if you've heard of the film as either Necromancy or The Witching, they are essentially the same film. The film follows our protagonist Lori and her husband Frank as they move out of LA to a small town called Lilith, which is run by Orson Welles' character, Mr. Cato. We also learn that Lori has recently lost a child, and this is also kind of prompted why her and Frank have taken this move outside of the city to this small town. Oh, my baby. Easy my does baby. it, Mrs. Brandon. My baby. Where's Two my baby? Two cc's of luminol, nurse. Where's my baby? Before they leave, Lori has a dream or a prophecy in which she's told that uh, she possesses the power of necromancy. That is, that she can bring people back from the dead. And during this dream, she's also warned that she can use this ability, but shouldn't use it in the town of Lilith. Their entire trip to Lilith is marred with trouble. Not only does Lori have her vision, but she also um, gets into a fight with Frank, which ends up causing a car accident and the death of another person. Did anyone ever tell you you have a fantastic imagination? <laughs> She also has a vision about seeing a funeral and their car breaks down. Oh, son of a bitch. So right away, it's kind of sign after sign that this move to Lilith maybe isn't the best thing for them. Once in Lilith, Lori makes some friends and she discovers a few things about the town that are a bit suspicious. One is that Mr. Cato, again played by Orson Welles, is kind of the mayor of the town, but he also is the, the owner of the town and he kind of makes all the rules. And some of those rules are that no one over 30 can live there, they all have to be part of his witch coven, and no one is allowed to have children. He owns more than just the town, the buildings, the factory, and things. He owns the people too, all of us. Knowing all of this, Lori starts to get very suspicious of the townspeople and kind of their way of life. So one night they are invited to a ritual at Mr. Cato's house in which Lori receives a tarot card reading. Now the figurations and images symbolically signify all wisdom, all truths, and all knowledge of God and the universe. The tarot card deck that they use in the film is the Giant Rider Waite, which is a larger version of the traditional Rider Waite deck, which is a very common deck uh, that was used at the time. The reading Lori is getting is called a Celtic cross reading, and each card signifies something different in the question that she has been asked. The first card that we see for Lori is the Devil card, and this card is in the position referred to as the present. So this is kind of what's standing in her way at the moment. And the imagery on the card shows a devil and two people naked and chained. But what is noteworthy is that the chains are very loose, indicating that these people could leave if they wanted to, but they're choosing to stay. So I find the imagery on this card really reflects the ritual scenes that we see for Mr. Cato's coven, and the fact that Lori is there and she could leave if she wanted to, but she, she hasn't yet. 
And also the devil card represents our kind of carnal urges. Um, the things that are kind of our shadow self or things we shouldn't want, but we do. So it's all about indulging. It's all about the feasts of the flesh, if you will. So these people are naked. They're indulging in the things that they maybe shouldn't. It's all very hedonistic. And that's very much what the devil card represents. The next card that comes up for her is in position two, which is called the challenge. So the things that are also stopping her from escaping, and which is the lover's card. And if you look closely, they kind of mirror each other in that we see two people standing side by side with this kind of godly figure above. And on the devil card, it's very similar, but we see the devil. So the lover's card is about a soul connection. And I think in this moment, it really just specifically stands for her and Frank. So the challenge that she has right now is that Frank is refusing to listen to her with her concerns about Lilith and let her leave, even though she has said many times she's uncomfortable staying there. The next card that we see represents the past. And in that position, we see the card of the Empress. And the Empress represents kind of the ultimate mother figure. So very nurturing, very motherly, maternal. And if this is in the past position, I would say that it is meant to represent Lori and everything that she's had to deal with up until her move to Lilith, which is losing a child, having to be that kind of nurturing person for her husband and her husband not really reciprocating that. So she's taken on this role as the Empress in her own life. And now she's kind of lost that ability with their move to Lilith. The next card that we see is in the future position, and that's the Wheel of Fortune. It represents the cyclical nature of life, the beginning and end, and then beginning again. So life, death, rebirth. Also, you can look on the card and see that the Wheel of Fortune is represented in the middle, but there is this devil kind of like holding on in a very unnatural way. So that's saying that sometimes the devil will kind of come up, being that there are bad times, but then it keeps circling around and there are good times as well. So. When I see this card come up for her, knowing what I know about the outcome of this film, I think that it is very true to her experience, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. The next card revealed is the one above, which represents something that's overseeing the problem at hand. And we see here that it's the Emperor. And the Emperor card is very archetypal of uh, what you would imagine a king would be. So a very stern rules with like an iron fist. And I do believe that this is meant to represent Mr. Cato as he seems to be the one that kind of controls all the goings on in the town. And he's ultimately the one keeping her in the town. The next card that's revealed is the below card and that represents the subconscious. And this card is the Fool. And the Fool is actually the first card in the tarot deck and represents the hero's journey. So I believe that this is meant to be Lori and she's about to step off on a journey that she doesn't know what's going to happen. Much like the Fool is about to step over the edge of the cliff into the unknown. So this is her subconscious. This is all of her intuitions kind of that we've seen through her prophecies, through her fear of the town coming through in this card. She doesn't know what's going to happen next and she's fearful of it, but she's also still moving forward. The final card that we see is meant to be another challenge card because it's placed over top as well. And this one is the death card. And in tarot, death doesn't actually mean death so much as it means a rebirth or a beginning of something new. So a lot of times when this card comes up, it's very scary to people, but it isn't really meant to be. However, in this instance, I do believe it is meant to literally prophesize the death of Lori as as soon as she sees this card, she also sees her own death. <laughs> So after the tarot reading, Lori begins to see a small boy around town. And at the same time, Mr. Cato kind of convinces her that he needs her to use her powers of necromancy to bring back his son from the dead. You were brought here for one purpose. You're going to use your power for me to bring life to the dead. However, the only way that she's able to do that is if she dies. So Lori is obviously very 
reluctant to go through with this ritual, as I think all of us would be. But after finding out that her husband is having an affair with one of the town's women, she decides that she's had enough of Lilith and her life, and she agrees to do the ritual. Depending on which version of the film you are watching, whether it's necromancy or the witching, there are two separate endings. And fair warning, I'm about to spoil them. Uh, so if you haven't seen this 50-year-old movie, you can pause it now and go watch the ending and then come back to this video. But otherwise, here we go. So Lori goes through with the ritual and thus, in the end, fulfilling the prophecy that was shown to her through the tarot card reading, and she does die. So when I reflect on this film and their use of tarot cards, I have to say that it was very accurate to the uh, true meaning of the tarot, especially the outcome card being the Wheel of Fortune, because as with the ritual, someone needs to die for someone to live, it kind of shows that death and rebirth that is indicated in that card. So I think it was very smart of them to use that. I also like the imagery of the fool, the empress, and the emperor as those archetypes of Lori and Mr. Cato. So I think that was very well done. The only card, and I kind of always bump on this one, is the use of the death card. Because yes, she dies. There's the word death on the card. It's spooky. But that's not really what the card is about. So overall, there are seven cards used. I would give it a solid six out of seven for their accuracy um, of the cards. So that's our episode for today. If you picked out anything different in the readings, please leave a comment below and let me know if I missed anything or you have other interpretations of the cards. And please remember to like and subscribe to Rumor TV so you can get notifications on when more episodes of Terra Tarot as well as their other content is released. And join me next time and we'll see what's in the cards. I can snap way better with this hand. Wow, this is such a lame snap. It was like, was like it feels like it's on the wrong side because I've watched yeah. it so many times. Yeah. <laughs> the tarot card reading is at minute 35. Just for the editor. <laughs>